me. I'm driving to work. <laughs> and uh, the story drops, which I don't think surprised anybody. The first step for Anthony Davis was to sign with Clutch Sports, Rich Paul. And that made us think, all right, all right, he's, he's joined up with LeBron's guy. The <laughs> second step, though, is now for the player, and this is hard, for the player to go, I want out. You're going to get booed. I, I, players can never win. Carmelo Anthony was totally honest in Denver. I love you. I want out. They booed him. Uh, LeBron James didn't tell anybody in Cleveland. They hated him. Players can't win. No. So, first of all, Anthony Davis, the player. Matt, do you like him? Love him. I, and I definitely respect the move about, like you said, it's a hard thing to do. But you have to respect it from a standpoint of now you've told the organization, okay, there's no hope. You don't plan on building around me. It gives the organization a chance to obviously be frustrated and probably mad, but then, okay, now we got to look at it from a business standpoint. We got to take our feelings out of it because we know we're losing one of the part we're going to go down as one of the best players ever. What's next? What can we get for him? What can we do? How can we change things up? So I definitely respect the fact that although tough, he came out and said, clear as day, um, I'm not going to resign. So, you know, make a move. Listen, fans can hate this, but it should be noted when you give the team a heads up, this is what Paul George did to the Pacers, and the Pacers got some good pieces in return. Yeah, respect it. Yeah, they got absolutely. A, Victor Ola, yes. So you're much better off giving your team a year heads up, and your general manager can make moves. Now, let me ask you this. I don't think the Lakers is necessarily, could be not necessarily, Matt, the best place to win a title. I think if you went to Boston, the East is easier. He'd be arguably the best player in the East. Um, Boston's got, I think, a better head coach, perhaps, and a better roster. Would you still, if you were Anthony Davis, you've been a Laker, choose the Lakers? I think the lure of L.A. is a monster, and I think that some can never be, that's something that can never be downplayed. Um, Hollywood, uh, Matthew Johnson, LeBron, it's really never been more attractive, you know, for, for someone. I mean, the Shaq and Kobe era has come and gone, but that was a very attractive era now. But, you know, they're on the brink of, you know, thinking they have something with LeBron, a bunch of talented young pieces, and you add an Anthony Davis, and, and that's going to put you definitely in contention in the West. Now, definitely what you said is true about going to the Celtics. Um, really, it's only a two- or three-team waste out there. With the West, any team, any year can get hot, case in point, Denver this year. Um, but like I said, it. L.A., the L.A. factor, and I know he spends a lot of off-season time out here. He's always in L.A., so yes. it's, uh, to it's me... It's the worst-kept secret in the league. <laughs> right. I mean, I, the writing's been on the wall for a little bit. Like you said, he signed with Clutch Sports a while ago. LeBron comes out and says how much he would love to play with A.D., and A.D. kind of downplays his feelings and, and, you know, doesn't really comment. It's not a big deal to him, but all deep down knowing that, okay, this is probably uh, definitely a destination I, w I would like okay, to take so, a look into. Okay, so if you had... Let's say, according to Brad Turner, who covers the Lakers for the L.A. Times, to make this deal happen, the Lakers would have to give up Lonzo, the very talented Kyle Kuzma, Zubac, their big center they like playing well last couple of weeks, and the number one pick. So that means it would be LeBron, it would be Anthony Davis, and say, you know, Brandon Ingram. Mm. Uh, mm. I, I, How good I think... a team is that? I think the ability to, to get these one-year deals now with these proven veterans is good. I think the Lakers have done that this year in, in, in Rondo and in, in Lance Stevens and finally giving Michael Beasley a chance to play. I love that. Uh, JaVale McGee. So there's these vets out here that you can fill in roster okay. spots and, and do some stuff with. Um, to me, Kuzma is probably the one guy I would try to keep the hardest, not downplaying Ingram or, uh, or Zoe. If, if Magic can somehow keep Kuzma and... Um, pick up AD, and then build around that. Now, that, that's different. That team I like. Yeah, absolutely. Because I need to win a championship. This is what makes the Warriors so lethal, that Clay Thompson can drop 32. Anyone can drop 40 on that team. Okay. The bottom line is Kuzma has shown an ability on more than one night, Ingram has not, to, to drop 28 it. to 34 points. To go get it. I love Kuzma. He, you know, he's a dog, and you know, he needs to work on defense and rebounding a little bit more, but I think that comes with maturity and age in this league and understanding uh, what exactly his role is. But I think I said the last time I here, to have Kuzma as a third option is, 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 it's a, nice. is a blessing. That's a championship team. Absolutely. Okay, um, Luke Walton. I, I, and again, I am not reporting this. It was reported. Jackie McMullen, who I think, you know, Jackie, if you've been around mm -hmm. this league, she's a veteran. She's very formidable. If she writes it, it's true. She said there's tension in the building. Uh, LeBron's peeps want Luke Walton out. Um, listen, I think it's fair to say LeBron can be very demanding of his coaches. He wanted Spolstra out, reportedly, and Pat Riley said, Not no, well, we like him a lot. Right. Uh, David Blatt got moved. Many said it was LeBron's camp. I didn't get it verified, but that was the story out there.
Is he, Matt, the right guy? I think Luke is 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 definitely a great basketball mind. Um, you know, when I played there, he he and Phil were always talking about strategy and X's and O's, and and, and Luke was was right there in the mix. Um, I think Luke is getting a bad rap because obviously the Lakers head coach is probably the hottest seat in professional sports from day one. I think he knew he was his his days were ticking. So if you don't turn this around and win a championship, you're going type situation. So. Um, the camp situation you speak of is funny, you know what I mean? Because it was all about La uh, LeVar last year, and I think Magic pulled an OG car. Like, you know, you keep <laughs> running your mouth and your son is out here. You haven't heard nothing from LeVar. So right. usually usually camps don't hold weight. But when this camp um, speaks, considering Rich Paul is in this camp, and Rich Paul has Anthony Davis, and Rich Paul, you know, has a voice now with that. So, nor like I said, normally camps, you don't care what camps say, but you kind of have to listen to what this camp is talking about. And, and it, it, if it's either Luke or AD, Luke is going to be a casualty of war because you're pretty much going to do anything you can to get Anthony Davis. Player, You know, I, I always heard players like Luke. Uh, Luke is a great coach's player. You know, a teammate of I mine, heard. friend of mine. Um, like I said, I think it's just he's getting a bad rap. I don't know. Now, whether that's LeBron played with him in Cleveland, maybe guys didn't respect his playing um, as a player, because I know a lot of guys, you know, look at that kind of stuff. But as a coach and as a basketball mind, you know, you don't so much about coaching now is not so much X and O's is about relating to your players. Thank you. And, and it, this is a new generation. The best Steve X Kirk. and O's coach. Yeah, the best X and O's coaches really don't have a, a place in the league anymore because you have to be able to accommodate your players. You have to be able to get along with your players. You have to be able to deal with a bunch of crazy different personalities now. So it's not so much about coaching in X and O's, it's about you need a coach that can relate to these younger players in this new generation, and I think Luke is one of those guys. Well, it's a very interesting point. Um, you know, years ago, baseball used to be so much about strategy, and then Joe Torrey, who had a losing record, went to the Yankees, and the Yankees loaded the roster full of a lot of personalities, and it was about that time where managers that got along with players were better managers. Joe no Torrey was the first one where it wasn't about the X's and O's. Joel could deal with A-Rod, could deal with Jeter, could deal with, you know, I mean, so, and I think you're seeing that more and more. I think even in the NFL, Matt, to yes. your point, this past off season, Belichick had to scale back yes. and treat Tom Brady like a grown-up. Mm -hmm. the, the, the athletes now have 100 million it, net because, worth. Because, I mean, the, the, their value, the, what they're being paid first and foremost, and then how their voice travels more than anybody else in the franchise now. These franchise players, you know, are their voices are bigger than the franchises alone. They're not bigger than the franchise, but their voices carry. You know what I mean? So what they say is on headlines on every talk show, uh, you know, in, in America. So it's really about finding a, a coach that can relate. Like I said, I know Luke is a player's coach. He's someone that can relate. But when the camps start speaking in such a powerful camp as LeBron's camp, uh, you know, the clock is ticking. But one good thing that, you know, we pointed on the show earlier today, he's got Jeannie in his corner. Jeannie Buss has been pro-Luke. Jeannie is in. Jeannie knows the game very well. And uh, to have her in your corner is, is a great thing, you know. So I, I hope he gets a chance, uh, especially if they're able to land AD to, to yeah, be I'd able like to, to have... I, I'd like to see if he gets a, a chance, you know, because really who else is out there, to be honest with the you? Other thing, that's a good point, Matt. And the other thing is... Brad Stevens had, because Brad Stevens lost Gordon Hayward last year, first game. So it took Brad Stevens, the genius, mm -hmm. the Sean McVay of the NBA, took him six, eight weeks to figure out the Celtics. It, this is hard, man. Mm -hmm. When you insert Anthony Davis, you got to give new, it 25 games. Whole new thing. I mean, even a season, half a season, it just takes time. And I think sports so often today, not only with the Lakers, but what have you done for me lately? What are, you know, I need it done now. I need you to take the worst team to the best team. And all this takes, pro you know, all this takes time. People think the Warriors were overnight success and you saw they built in the draft. They got Coach Kerr. They were able to get, you know, they won championships without KD. They were able to get KD. It was a process. It didn't happen like this. I think Philly is a good sign. You know, yep. they're kind of you know, kind of in a standstill right now, but it was definitely a process because they were the doormat of the NBA for a yes. while. You know what I mean? And now they have promise. They have two all-stars, uh, a destination now that teams want to go to. So you just have to give situations time, and I don't yep. think we have time in sports for some reason anymore. Hour three next. Thanks, Matt. The Herd.